You know, I am not a smart man. And after reading all the things that I've been reading about the Eagles today, I am even dumber than I was this morning. That's right. It is getting harder and harder to calculate the calculations of the cornbread because I can't do math and I can't remember numbers. I'm getting really dumb. And I'm already dumb, but that's just the way it is. Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here. Let's wake up the football gods. Wow. Oh, what a night. You know, I was laying in bed dreaming about today, not because it's Championship Sunday and the Cowboys are in it. No, because we're not in it. But because today, it was 21 years ago that on Match.com, on Match.com on the 28th of January, that my current wife saw a picture and was rated as one of her top 10 prospects of somebody to date that she recognized my picture, which was taken with my daughter's 0.3 megapixel Barbie camera. And had it not been for recognizing me as somebody she knew from college, she would have just swiped on past because she said, your description was like, it wasn't even like legible. It wasn't even like English, okay? It was so bad, you just looked like a freaking idiot. I said, so it was accurate then, right, baby? But we actually got on the phone that night, and we talked to like three or so in the morning. We ended up meeting for lunch because we knew each other from college. We had run into each other over the years and things, and we got there. We never dated. We were always great friends. And when we met at lunch, it was magical for me. And she was like, oh, it's Mark, my good friend. And I said, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. She's like, okay. And I will say that I wore her down couple weeks later we were dating and by memorial weekend we had sold my house and we bought this house and we moved in and a year later on january 28th we got married 20 years ago 20 years ago so i'm i'm just amazed that 20 years of my life with the woman who was asleep right next to me I was excited. I was happy. I was okay. I was good. I had done all my content. It was a good day. Did my fireside chat. You know, had a great live stream. And then I get a special gift. Just before I was about to put my phone down, I see that the Eagles hire Kellen Moore. Now, it's kind of crazy that they did this late on a Saturday night. It was kind of like, you know, typically when there's bad news for the country and stuff, you know, that they don't want to have a lot of press to it. They usually do it like on a Friday night or a Saturday, you know, or Saturday or something like this. So that way you don't get a whole lot of publicity to it. So the Eagles at 11 o'clock on Saturday night announced that they're bringing in Kellen Moore. It's crazy. I, I at first when I first saw it, I had to go through and check. I said this can't be. I said this this is a fake account. This is some AI shit. They didn't really hire Kellen Moore. And here we go. All of a sudden, you know, I I, I got up, I went downstairs here, I shot a video because I was like in awe. Put it out there last night. Shout out to everybody who's already seen the video. It's well over ten thousand views. And I immediately, as soon as I'm uploading it. I text Philly 500 and he's like, I'm on it. And he sent me the link for his video. And, you know, he said it interrupted his baby making matrimonial duties. It's like, I can't get that out of my mind now. Thank you, Philly 500. Now I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here ready to go to sleep. And now I got you doing matrimonial duties. You know, I, 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 I mean, because, you, you know, what what was running through my head after he said that? You know, I am not a smart man. And after reading all the things 
that I've been reading about the Eagles today, I am even dumber than I was this morning. That's right. It is getting harder and harder to calculate the calculations of the cornbread because I can't do math and I can't remember numbers. I'm getting really dumb. And I'm already dumb. But that's just the way it is. So I got... Uh, baby making in Philly 5. Uh, that's worse than Cop Pizzle. In my mind. But he says, now you're going to see... You're going to see that he was scapegoated by Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. He's going to be great with the Eagles. Well, first thing I'm going to say is you might as well go ahead and get rid of DeAndre Swift because you ain't running the ball. Or you're going to take your running back and you're literally going to make him your center, okay? But to be fair, to be fair, this is deja vu. This is literally deja vu because I said this to some Charger fans last year. And this is what you got from Chargers fans. I, I, uh, and, and I, I want to try to get in contact with uh, this guy, Michael, um, because I'd love to actually interview. If you, Michael, if you, I think it's Michael, if you're watching this, I, I'm, I'm going to send you a message. I'm going to spam your stuff and, and try and get, I, I want to talk to you and get your perspective on this. You see this man? He is an offensive genius. In my last video, a lot of Cowboys fans were telling us genius. as fans that Kellen Moore is not a good offensive coordinator after he led the Cowboys to have the second best offense in the NFL since 2019 with Dak Prescott. Now, if throw, you throw shade at Dak. In its entirety, okay. objectively, and only look at the facts that I'm pointing out. I don't understand how you can think that Kellen Moore is not an expert play designer, or at least a really good offensive coordinator. Just give him really good. I mean, can we can we give him that? So I'm gonna pull up the film from the Cowboys versus Bears game, and while I do that, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. And now. Let's get into the film room. First play that I want to show you highlights again how Kellen Moore understands that this is a matchup league. Michael Gallup at the bottom of the screen matched up with his Bears cornerback, and this was all day long. Boom! Right there, puts the man in an absolute blender. He is wide open. Beautiful route running by Michael Gallup. First read, Jack Prescott goes to Michael Gallup, and that's an easy 15 yard completion, but. It's not about that, right? This is about the play design. So I'm gonna rewind it, and then we're gonna look at the top of the screen right here. As you can see, all three of these receivers are running their routes. CD Lamb is going way deep on a vertical route, while these two receivers are just gonna stop on these little hitch routes right here at the 50 yard line so that they can get their blocks because the way this play is designed is they understand that this is man coverage. Everyone right here is man. We got this linebacker lined up in man against Tony Pollard, the running back, who's gonna have all of this space to work with but this safety right here is the robber over the middle of the field and then we have this one deep safety okay. so we're gonna have all of this field to work with and play with i mean look at if michael gallup is not open on this play we're still going to get about 10 yards on this quick little pass to Tony Pollard at the top of the screen. I have seen so many creative run designs by Kellen Moore so far. We have two tight ends lined up at the top of the line of scrimmage. Running but place. I want you to focus right here at the bottom side oh. of the line of scrimmage, okay? Right now, it just looks like a simple run to the left side, the strong side of the formation, but it's not. We don't have any guards pulling or anything, but this right tackle, all of a sudden, you see how he gets parallel to the line of scrimmage, and now he's looking this way, facing the edge defender, blocking him out of the play, creating this gap right here, oh. which the weak side linebacker has to respect as a cutback one. And I think this is okay. what I know for sure this is designed because if this left side of the field gets blown up, Tony Pollard has an easy cutback lane right here that this linebacker has to respect. And because he respects it so much, he's actually late to his assignment and it creates this huge mm. gaping hole right here where okay. nobody is. Tony Pollard, good enough running back to make five yards into 10 to 15 yards. Another two tight end set. Okay. Here we go. The Chargers just lost to the Lions in a copy and paste game from what we saw in week one, which tells me that nothing has changed. And Brandon Staley really needs to freaking double reset this team because he already reset it once. He needs to do it again. Let's talk about this game, man, because I'm really frustrated with how this all went down. 
Make sure to like, subscribe to this video if you do enjoy this content. Blah, 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 blah. Let's get into this freaking offense, man. I, they keep running the ball Let's on get first down, offense. and it is not working. When you have an injured quarterback in a below average offensive line, it is crucial for offensive success to not get behind the sticks. They just can't run the ball in general. Joshua Kelly is not getting as many touches as he should, and Isaiah Spiller isn't even active when he could run the ball between the tackles pretty well in the preseason. I know that it was just the preseason, but Spiller has been inactive a lot. And remember, we drafted him in the fourth round just this past year. If we're not going to get him a shot when the run game is struggling like this then you might as well just burn the pick dude austin eckler isn't as good between the tackles but it is but he is a great receiving threat man when he catches the ball he was targeted by justin herbert in the screen game a couple times and he is as good as any running back when he catches a screen pass the problem is He's not been able to corral in all of his targets because he's dropping some balls. And I don't put that entirely on him because the accuracy on his targets is inconsistent. And that leads us into Justin Herbert, the problems that he's been having. Justin Herbert is moving around more by design, probably design. because they finally recognize that he can't <coughs> keep taking hits and running for his life once pressure gets to him so they might as well have him on the rollout and keep the pressure away from him for as long as possible so he can scan the field cleanly <laughs> alex anzalone pressured him in the first quarter as he was scrambling for his life and he threw the ball away and it was intercepted because he didn't throw it far enough out of play Ball placement for Justin Herbert has become a major issue, okay? He's constantly throwing the ball poorly to guys like Austin Eckler, Gerald Everett, and basically anyone not named Keenan Allen. He missed Everett on a deep pass that would have probably been a touchdown, man. And he, he missed hey. Austin Eckler a couple times last week and hey. in this game, like I mentioned, in the screen pass. I understand that the pressure is affecting him negatively, and he's injured too, mm -hmm. but it's really affected his timing and his accuracy, which makes this offense like completely stagnant because if Herbert can't throw a perfect ball, then the Chargers basically have no answers on offense, even with all of the talent on this team, man. But Justin Herbert, right after missing that Gerald Everett throw for a touchdown he threw an amazing ball to uh -huh. Keenan Allen for a tutty to bring this game close and then give the Chargers offense life man he threw that same perfect pass to Jalen Guyton in the second half to tie the game after Keenan got hurt yes they scored in the second half can you actually believe that man it's because when he gets time and is comfortable in the pocket like he had time in this game for most of it he shows how great of a quarterback he is, even when under pressure, man. He is so good at extending and evading tacklers. Justin Herbert has struggled this year, no doubt. But he clearly is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. The Chargers have put so many resources into this offensive line, so there's no excuse for bad play up front. Mm -hmm. But when they pass protect well, Justin Herbert can take over the game. And he was the reason that the Chargers even had a chance in this one. He threw four touchdowns. What else do you want him to do? After that touchdown that he threw to Keenan Allen, man, Keenan started heating up, bro. He had 113 of the 210 total yards on offense in the first half. What else can I'm I say about just Keenan leave Allen right that there. I haven't already said, man? Look at his stat. I'm gonna just leave it right there for you guys. And Eagle fans, that's fine. Believe this is the savior. This is going to be the thing that's going to make Jalen Hurts incredible. Now, they thought that, you know, Kellen Moore coming there was going to be the difference because we were basically told that Justin Herbert, who's got the second highest contract in NFL history with a great running a game with great receivers, now he had the perfect piece and Kellen Moore, who's going to be able to use this. It wasn't like he was working with a garbage-ass quarterback like Dak Prescott. The thing that's interesting is, from 22 to 23, Justin Herbert's completion percentage went down by three. He was injured quite a bit. He only ended up playing in um, 13 games instead of 17, okay? So in four games less... He was 1,600 yards less. 1,600 yards less. His passing per game. Here's where it's amazing. 289 his rookie year. 
294 his sophomore year. 278 his third year. And only 241 with the genius Kellen Moore. And his rating, oh, by the way, that was his lowest of his career. Hmm. The running game went to shit. So, is Kellen Moore the genius that got the most out of Dak Prescott that he just didn't have the tools to work with? And now that he's going to Philadelphia with a great offensive line and great talent of, you know, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith and uh, Dallas Goddard and, of course, with the great, the, the greatest quarterback in the history of football, Jalen Hurts, is he ready to shine again? Hmm. We'll see. We shall see. Eagle fans, good luck with it. Like I said, Michael McLean, I'm looking for you, bro. I, I really would love to talk to you and get your perspective on are you sad that you lost Kellen Moore? I'm Mark Holmes, and well, congratulations, Eagles. Peace out. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report.